Hello and welcome to another Science Tutor video. I'm your tutor Nathan and this video is going to do a worked example on the topic of moments, CSEC physics, moments of a force. So we're going to do this question which is on the screen. It says Mary, who has a mass of 65 kilograms, is 0 0.5 meters from the pivot of a seesaw, while Tim sits 0 0.4 meters on the other side. If the seesaw is balanced or in equilibrium, then A, what is Tim's mass? And B, where will Tim have to move if Mary moves to a new position 0 0.6 meters away from the pivot? So let's start with a simple sketch of this scenario. We have a seesaw, the pivot in the center, which is the turning point. We have Mary on one side, and we have Tim on the other side. Mary is at a distance of 0 0.5 meters from the pivot. Tim is at a distance of 0 0.4 meters. Because both of them, Mary and Tim, have mass, M1 and M2, and both are experiencing the acceleration due to gravity, g, then they have a weight, which is a force, f1 and f2 respectively, which will try to turn the seesaw anti-clockwise and clockwise respectively. These turning forces are called the moments of a force, m1, capital M, and M2. And the principle of moments states that if object is in equilibrium, then the sum of the moments in one direction, or the anti-clockwise moments, will be equal to the sum of the moments in the other direction, the clockwise moments. In other words, the turning force in one direction must be equal to the turning force in the other direction for this object to remain in equilibrium, to remain steady. In other words, the net turning force is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and solve the first part of the question, finding Tim's mass. We know that this object, the seesaw, is in equilibrium. So the turning moments on one side will be equal to the moments on the other side. The moment of a force, m, is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the pivot or turning point. So the anti-clockwise moments, or the moment of the force due to Mary, which will be equal to her weight, w1, or f1, let me stick with f, times her distance from the pivot, and this will be numerically equal to Tim's force, or weight, times his distance from the pivot. Now, weight, which is this F we're talking about, is equal to an object's mass times gravitational acceleration, and G is approximately equal to 10 newtons per kilogram. So, Mary's mass, m1, times g, will be multiplied by d1, her distance from the pivot, will be equal to Tim's mass, m2, times g, times his distance from the pivot. Notice that g, the gravitational acceleration, appears on both sides of this equation. So it can actually be left out or cancelled from both sides. I'm going to stick with leaving g in the equation for now, but I'll show you a little later how it actually cancels out. So let's substitute in the values that were given. Mary's mass is 65 kilograms. g is 10 newtons per kilogram. Mary's distance from the pivot is 0 0.5 meters. 
Tim's mass is unknown, so let's write it as m2 for now. The gravitational acceleration is 10 newtons per kilogram. And Tim's distance from the pivot is 0 0.4 meters. Okay, let's solve for m2, Tim's mass. m2 will be equal to 65 times 10 times 0 0.5 divided by 10 again times 0 0.4 meters notice that 10 newtons per kilograms which is the gravitational acceleration appears both in the numerator and the denominator of this expression and so again it cancels out it can be left out if you work out this value you get a mass of 81.25 kilograms notice meters cancel so you're left with kilogram as your final unit. And this is your answer for Tim's mass. So let's move on to the second part of this problem and calculate where Tim will have to move his new position if Mary moves to a position 0 0.6 meters away from the pivot. Notice that she would be moving away from the pivot. She's moving further away from the pivot. So her turning force, her moment, m1, would be expected to increase. The, the moment is equal to mass times gravitational acceleration times distance from the pivot. And if her distance from the pivot increases, then her overall turning force should increase as well. All right. So her new position is 0 0.6 meters away, so let's substitute the values that we have. Tim's mass, we now know, is 81.25 kilograms. We don't know his new distance from the pivot. So when we solve for d2, we get that d2 is equal to 65 times 10 times 0 0.6 divided by 81.25 times 10. Notice again that gravitational acceleration g is in the numerator and denominator. In the step above or the line above, it's on both sides of the equal sign. So it can be left out. It can be cancelled from this step. We work out a value for d2 of 0 0.48 meters which is the answer to our question. Now, although in this case we only had one turning force on each side of the pivot, or one object contributing to a turning force, in other examples, this may not be so. In other words, if you were to add another person on one side of the seesaw, then we would have two moments, two anti-clockwise moments, and one clockwise moment. So we'd have to sum the two anti-clockwise moments and equate that sum to the one clockwise moment. I hope this video is useful. Please feel free to rewatch the video or leave us a comment in the comment section. And please remember to stay tuned for other videos in this series. Thank you.